Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. And this is probably Dr. Z has been one of the people we people are just so excited about. We announced it a, about a week and a half ago that you were going to be on it, and people are so excited. Um, so it's Dr. Eric Zelensky. Dr. Z is what they call you for short. He's the best-selling author of The Healing Power of Essential Oil oils <laughs> so welcome we're so glad to have you well thank you for having me this is a pleasure and i was grateful for the opportunity to chat just a few minutes before we jumped on and to hear your story and how powerful it is and the impact you have on the world so the pleasure is really all mine well i know that your website drericz.com you and your wife sabrina founded it and you guys have reached six million visitors per year and you guys are now number one source for biblical health and non-branded essential oils education online that that's pretty impressive i wasn't expecting it i really <laughs> wasn't this this was a hobby blog for my wife a honey to-do list where she has a place for her recipes and and i was a medical writer at the time and it really my website was a glorified resume it was my curriculum vitae to get new clients and Next thing you know, it just exploded. And we're just really honored and blessed to share what we feel is life transforming information. And so we don't- Well, I know that you, you've struggled yourself with all kinds of chronic illnesses from a, a young age. Talk about that just so people can kind of get an idea of that. Oh yeah, yeah. When, you know, when I tell people I was sick and I say that very respectfully for people that, that are children or have children with leukemia, cancers, any sort of life-threatening conditions. I never had that. I, I was just chronically not well. I could remember being, you know, a young boy with, with just regular sore throats to the point where my mother and father elected to have my adenoids and tonsils taken out. And then when I got a little bit older, a lot of GI issues like gas and bloating, constipation, and now no as food sensitivities and allergies. And then it developed into cystic acne, which developed into depression. That's when things got really serious when I was a teenager, where I literally started having chronic pain throughout my body. Um, scoliosis started to develop. And then mental issues like depression, like I mentioned earlier, and suicidal thoughts like I literally was a wreck and battling chronic fatigue in college I would end up drinking up to a pot of coffee a day and smoking a pack of cigarettes and a day just to because I became addicted to stimulants mm. and I had a life transforming experience when I was 23 years old and that's when I became a Christian and at the time, my mentor told me, look, Eric, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You got to take care of it. it. I mean, this isn't, this is your spiritual act of worship, right? And so whether someone is Christian or not, if you are, um, if you are in tune spiritually, you can, mm. you could relate to that. And yeah. that's one thing, even though we're quote Bible health educators, we have people from all over the world, from all faiths and spiritual backgrounds. But one common denominator of everyone that follows our work is, is, is they are spiritually inclined. And there is an element where we, we know that this, this temple needs to be treated a certain way. And we ultimately reap what we sow. And so if you're going to sow McDonald's and, and pharmaceutical drugs, you're going to reap the drawbacks of that. And That's so true. it's been 15 years of a journey helping people, writing books and articles and presenting at conferences. And So how did your book come to be? Tell us more about how your book came to, came to about. Yeah, my book, The Healing Power of Essential Oils, is really the culmination of several years of research and writing and interviewing experts around the globe on the therapeutic efficacy of essential oils. And the reason I wrote it was because simply no book exists like it. And, and that was shocking because as a researcher, you're thinking, well, nothing new is under the sun. You know, we just kind of reshape what other people write and put something together. No one has ever written a health book designed on how to use essential oils. No, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good books on A to Z user guides and references, but it's all more academic based. And right. for, if it's not academic based, it's like a, a reference manual, but no one has ever written a book, like an actual, I want to read this from chapter one, the chapter 15 kind of book on essential oils in this light and specifically not branded. Now you got some books out there that push one company or another, but you can't do that nowadays. The FDA won't allow you to sell a product and then speak about the therapeutic efficacy. And so for me, I decided to really um, 
focus on and and hold on to my freedom of speech as an American, which thank God we still have. Yes. And I'm able to talk freely about what the research says about essential oils. So it was really birth. It was birth. It was one of those true supply and demand things where all of our followers all around the globe, one of the consensus that people asked us is we need support. We need a resource. Like, what do you recommend? And right. I'm like, I don't, I got a textbook. And they're like, well, I don't want that. I go, I got my aromatherapy manual that I went to school. You want that? And they're like, well, that doesn't help me. We want a user-friendly book. And so that's what it was. So as you know, a lot of our listeners are interested in losing weight. And so what would you say are some of the top essential oils that support weight loss and why? Well, I'm really glad you asked that question because our next book in May 2019 uh-huh. is titled The Essential Oils Diet. Oh, wow. I love that yeah. title. Yes. And we're going to be focusing on, and I'll let the cat out of the bag here just a minute. We're not focused on numbers. Mm -hmm. We're not focused on on nutrition um, numbers at all. No macronutrients, micronutrients. I don't care about the vitamins and minerals and carbs and proteins. I don't care about that stuff. I'm teaching people to focus on bioactive rich foods. What does that mean? Well, what are bioactives? Bioactives are antioxidants, polyphenols, disease fighting fat burning Mm -hmm. molecules in plants. You know what else bioactives are? Essential oils. People don't even realize that essential oils are bioactive compounds found in plants. So we walk people through just how to really focus on a heavily plant-based diet that walks people through losing weight, gaining weight sometimes as well, if you need to, using essential oils and bioactive foods. So with that, here's a list of four. And this is, I'll get, I've got to give you a little teaser on that. Okay. But um, the bottom line though, and this is key, and we cover this in the book, if you're living a fast food lifestyle and trying to use essential oils, right? like one step forward, two steps back. Yes. I know your listeners are way beyond that, but just in case one of your listeners shares us with a loved one who doesn't understand that or hasn't been told that, we need to focus on holistic lifestyle changes. And if you have a good diet, you're exercising, you're focusing on mind-body stress techniques or stress-relieving techniques, these four oils are super effective at burning. I got to tell you a funny story that really relates to that because my dad, when he, this was a while ago, but he was trying to lose weight and he started doing slim fast. Remember when slim fast, this was like 20 years ago when slim fast was all the rage. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I've gained like seven pounds doing slim fast. And we're like, well, dad, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. I take the slim fast every morning and every time at lunch, but he's instead of like not eating, he was like eating a full breakfast and the slim fast, eating the lunch and the slim fast. So like, it sounds so silly, but in his mind, he was literally thinking, oh, if I take this shake with my food, I'm going to lose, you know, weight. And that's how I like to tell that story sometimes because it's like, that's the kind of silly things that people do is like, oh, I'm going to take these essential oils and still be eating, you know, Burger King and KFC every meal. It's not going to work. So uh, let's talk about autoimmune issues. Well, but the answer though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to make sure because people are like, yes, oh, yes, so I say it to say um, research, and this is proven, y'all, like literally inhaling lime and grapefruit mm-hmm. And any oil rich in D-limonene specifically, which would include orange and lemon, all the citrus, but specifically Mm -hmm. lime and grapefruit, inhaling that and also topical application and ingesting has been shown to trigger, to tell the brain to trigger what's known as lipolysis, which is fat burning, fat breakdown. So just Mm -hmm. by smelling that. Also, we see a similar effect with peppermint and cinnamon, but they help people lose weight in another way by helping crave unhealthy craving um, by helping curb unhealthy sugar cravings and cinnamon we know helps balance blood glucose which is one of the main issues where people have problems with weight gain so mm. increases insulin sensitivity as well so mm. i would say peppermint cinnamon lime and grapefruit are the top four that you want to start implementing and using and you can use that via your diffuser which you can see i have mine in the background it's a great blend mix all four of those in a blend you could put off one drop of each in a gel capsule put some coconut oil in it take that once a day try it for a month and just see what happens right or you can add a nice topical salve and apply that over your tummy and that's what my wife did we call her Mama Z Sabrina. That's what Sabrina does when she trains for a pageant and she's a, a pageant coach and she competes competitive at, at a high level. And so what she's doing to really help with some of the cellulite or she's had four babies and she's 40. And so mm-hmm. she has a 
whole system when she has a fat wrap and she really tighten up the tummy and the back of the thighs and some of the problem areas. And you look at her and she, you know, she's got a body of a mid 20 year old. And so that really does help to bring some oxygen back into the skin. There's ways of doing that. And it's actually all in my current book, The Healing Power of Essential Oils, the fat wrap and the fat burning roll on. But we go into much more depth than the new book. Yeah. Awesome. So we do have a lot of people who, tons of questions about autoimmune issues and autoimmune disease. Um, what kind of essential oil plan of attack would you give us a little hint on for autoimmune issues? Yeah. Yeah. And again, I'm glad you asked that because I started, I started researching autoimmunity and essential oils for my book, the healing power of essential oils. And I only wanted it. I was only planning on just maybe a little section, maybe a paragraph um, because we had so much to cover in this book and then it'll be coming a chapter. So I have a whole chapter devoted to this oh, and I good. found, yeah, I found the common underlying concern. The root cause that essential oils are most effective at is inflammation. And yes. most experts, especially functional medicine experts, all agree inflammation is the root cause of all autoimmune disorders. Yes, absolutely. So if you could start to tackle that internally by using oils rich in chemicals known as 1-8-cineol, and also we mentioned D-limonene, which is also fat burning and cancer fighting and helps with inflammation. It's like, how does this do it all? Well, that's what plants are for, y'all. You know, God yeah. gave us plants for healing. Yeah. And, and I never, I have always kind of questioning my mind if that, you know, I have a lot of listeners that constantly are asking about autoimmune issues. And is it that we, there's just so many people with that problem or because I've mentioned so many times on my podcast that I've dealt with autoimmune issues, are people relating to that and gravitating to it? But who knows? It's both. Oh, it's both. It really yeah. is. And, and the problem is, is that autoimmunity is running rampant. It's rampant now. Of the environmental insult. And so you got to understand y'all, your lipstick, your makeup, your lotions, your salves, your body care products, your cleaning products, all that, if they're not 100% natural, using essential oils, non-toxic, they're creating an insult to your body. And you could look at them like you would a virus or bacteria mm -hmm. or fungi. These are chemicals. And mm -hmm. these chemicals trigger an inflammatory response in your body because your body doesn't know what to do with it. And the, the best way of just, just think of it this way. Think about what happens when you cut your finger. Let's say you're cutting something, you're trying to chop up some vegetables and you accidentally cut your finger. Well, the inflammatory response that's natural to your immune system shunts blood to that area, causes it, to, there's redness, there's soreness, there's puffing, there's, it, that's a natural response to bring as much blood and healing to that area as possible. Well, that's what happens to your entire body systemically when you have chemicals in your bloodstream. So that's mm -hmm. what's known as systemic inflammation. That's what causes atherosclerosis, like little micro tears in your, in your vascular system. That could cause strokes and anxiety, which can lead to depression and other issues. It's all linked together. And so we don't realize literally, especially our skin absorbs all these negative chemicals. So what we try to do is help people use essential oils internally and also topically and also through the nose because it gets through the system mm -hmm. to combat inflammation that way. And also, you know, anti-inflammatory foods, exercise, mind-body techniques, all this stuff is very, very effective. Now, if you took your family on vacation, like, I mean, obviously you can't take all of these essential oils with you, but if you had to pick five that you were personally going to take on vacation with you, what would you take? You know, it's funny because my wife does take them all. She actually has a yes. little briefcase looking thing. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, she does. So you can, um, but if for, um, for me, my must have oils are orange, clove, peppermint, and those are the three that I, I really just need on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And the other two all depends on what I'm looking at doing. Like if it's, right. Um, if it's flu season or something, I'll bring like an immunity blend. Um, mm. If it's something where I need a little more energy or a little more of a mood boost, I'll probably bring another citrus like a lime or a lemon. Um, gotcha. But there's nothing I can't do with clove, orange, and peppermint. And they're all cost effective. These aren't the expensive ones. Notice I didn't say, um, I didn't say um, frankincense, which mm -hmm. is 
expensive one. I'd probably also, if I had to do five, I'd bring lavender because that would really help. Oh, call. yes. All right, let's jump right into the questions. This is from Janet in Atlanta. I have so enjoyed the last couple of podcasts that you've done about CBD oil. I've been taking it for chronic pain and it's really helped me a lot. I'm completely off all my prescription drugs. Great job, Janet. And she says, I know so many people that would benefit from CBD oil, including cancer, but I'm receiving some weird pushback from the Christian community who don't seem to understand the difference in illegal drugs and CBD oil. Also, people who think it's just another pyramid scheme. What would you say to both of these people and groups? Well, I actually have a really good report. It's an evidence-based report on cannabis oil. So go to my website, drericz.com. And what I would do, I would actually refer them to that, that article. So go to drericz.com, type up cannabis, and you'll see two articles, one on cannabis and one on cannabis oil. And I shared what the research really says about it. And because I am a Christian, I actually have a special note to Christians at the very bottom of the article telling them, like, look, this is a plant that was given to us by God. And if used properly, like any other plant on the, on the planet, then it's very safe and effective. Now, here's the problem, though. And I think this is something we need to recognize is that in the Christian community, there's a lot of uncertainty and fear with anything that could be psychotrophic. And so we do know that certain cannabis plants are laced with or hybridized to have um, THC components, which will make you high. And so that's unbiblical, right? You're not supposed to get drunk. You're not supposed to get high. So mm -hmm. I can understand why Christians are hesitant. However, true cannabis oil is CBD oil, has no THC in it. It theoretically should have no psychotrophic effects. But here's the problem, though. There's no one monitoring or evaluating what's on the market. And I've heard of several cases of people having really bad reactions to quote cannabis oil, but it really wasn't cannabis oil. It was like mm -hmm. straight up marijuana oil, which is very different. Mm -hmm. So with that said, I'd stick with the research. I'd stick with the CBD oil specifically that has no THC in it that won't get you high. And it could help with everything from mood disorders, anxiety, pain, cancer, like you name it. It's pretty profound. Awesome. All right. Annette in Harrisonburg. My niece is currently undergoing chemotherapy for brain cancer, and I can't get her to consider an alternate, alternate approach to chemo. I have convinced her to take some essential oils in addition to chemotherapy. What are the best oils I should give her to help with these side effects, and what oils can have her help possibly help the cancer from spreading or coming back? Yeah, this is a really good question. Um, one thing too, I think is really important is that we embrace integrative healthcare. And in my community, you know, Chantel, we have people that are just embarrassed to say, hey, I took an aspirin yesterday, I had some pain. You know, wintergreen mm -hmm. wasn't working for me. And thankfully, I mean, I can count on one hand how many times my family and I have taken antibiotics in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. But even then, I know people that are so extreme that they would never even take a drug even and where, under, where, you, where do you guys live? Where are oh, you from? Oh, we live in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, in the natural health community as a whole, you know, your favorite Dr. So-and-so is a mommy bloggers. Like, you know, a lot of us network can get together. So one thing I want to share with folks, and this is really, really important if you're trying to be natural, is understand that medicine's there. And oftentimes for people, medicine is a gift. It's a, it's a, it's a great help for emergencies, especially when natural therapies don't work. Mm. when you want them to work and sometimes they just don't work and it's about trial and error so when it comes to cancer specifically i wrote a book it's on amazon it's called the truth about essential oils and cancer it's only like seven or eight bucks i really recommend picking it up because it goes through again all the research that we know about essential oils but here's something that's really profound essential oils have been actually shown to help chemotherapy be more effective and I would never recommend not using essential oils um, when someone's on any sort of therapy. So there are a number. It all depends also on what cancer it is because different cancer lines are more effective or more responsive to certain essential oils. So in general, there is no like you use this oil. You know, everyone uses frankincense. That's a popular one. But, you know, frankincense um, research has shown isn't as effective as myrrh when you're attacking breast cancer, for example, right? Who would have thought? It's October 2nd, right? It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So mm -hmm. some things to think about, certain oils are more effective. So I would suggest picking up my book and we have it all there, all the research and just know, but know this too. 
I don't know of anything else like essential oils that could help with the side effects related to chemo and cancer, including um, low libido, digestive issues, headaches and pain, nausea, all those things. For digestive issues, what would you say would be your, your kind of your top three that you love for digestive issues? Yeah, traditionally, there's a number of oils that work with digestion. Traditionally, you're looking at fennel, ginger, and uh, peppermint that come up time and time again. For gut issues, you could go a little deeper and a little more aggressive, like tarragon and oregano come up for mm. gut issues. A little bit different than digestive. Again, there's two different things. Awesome. Okay, Sandra in North Carolina. Since I cleaned up my diet and focused on 80% eating clean, my thyroid is functioning so much better. I have significantly decreased the dosage of my medication and I really want to get off thyroid medicine, medication completely. And I'm curious how essential oils can help me with this goal. You know, that's a really good question. Um, we need to be really, really careful when anyone is weaning themselves of a drug. And this isn't just a general disclaimer just to save my own butt, but you don't do it without a doctor's or mm -hmm. pharmacist guidance. Um, the ramifications can be deadly, literally fatal, because what drugs do to the body, essentially cripple the body, especially thyroid drugs. If you've mm -hmm. been on thyroxine for long enough, your thyroid most likely isn't even producing thyroid hormone anymore. You can't just take yourself mm -hmm. off that. Mm -hmm. It could be fatal. And so what you want to do is you want to work with a qualified health professional um, someone, in my opinion, that understands enough about natural therapies like essential oils to at least give you some sort of support. I don't expect these people to be aromatherapists, but most functional medicine practitioners out there understand nutrition, supplementation, and many do understand how essential oils work enough to guide you in that process. Mm. We've known many people that have weaned themselves off of under the guidance of a healthcare professional um, through diet, exercise, and using essential oils to support. Now, there, uh, interestingly enough, I'm glad this question was asked because my team and I came up with a brand new report on how to use essential oils for thyroid support. It's on my website, drericz.com. And again, how do I summarize a 3,000 word report into like a two minute response? Um, you just got to check it out. Dive deep into what it is. There's so much that you could do. And even simply applying certain like cellular rejuvenating oils like frankincense and sandalwood and helichrysum diluted always over your thyroid can help. Like that's something that a dear friend of ours did. And she ended up getting off of thyroxin. But again, yeah. always under the medical advice of a healthcare professional. And you know, that brings us to another point. Like be careful y'all where you're getting your healthcare advice from mm -hmm. because I to answer that question really I need to know like what's your health history what other drugs are you taking what's your blood panel look yes like? and one concern I get in my heart I get it I know what it's like to be depressed and sick and and anxious and panic attacks I know what it's like to be desperate I know what it's like seeking out anyone I can the questions we get online scare me because people are like this is what I have what do you think I should do I'll do it whoa just stop for just a second. Red light. You don't want to get your medical advice this, this way because exactly. there are so many other factors that we don't know. And literally. Yeah, you need to see the full panel. Like for, yeah. for Sandra, we need to see, I'm not a doctor and I, your doctor needs to look at the whole scope and the whole picture and just asking a question doesn't work. But I will tell you, I personally did wean myself off of thyroid medicine and and the way that I did it was my doctor gave me 15 milligrams so let's say I was taking 60 milligrams of armor thyroid she gave me all 60 and 15 milligrams so then I could go from 60 to 45 then do a then stay on 45 for a while and take my blood see how I was doing then moved it to 30 you know very very slowly and continually going to get that that blood work checked by my doctor to figure out, hey, where am I and, and where's my thyroid at? And one thing that's really key to recognize, and this is something I can tell you definitively, there is no research, like none, to suggest that, that specific essential oils can help produce thyroid hormone. That doesn't mean it's not possible. So the approach for someone that's looking to work with a doctor to using essential oils and supplements in food the approach overall is to support the body and treat the body itself to boost immunity, 
to give your body what your body needs to reach homeostasis and balance. And two oils for virtually every health condition that someone's dealing with, two oils that you might want to consider having on hand are sandalwood and ylang wine. Known harmonizers. And what's a harmonizer? A harmonizer is an agent, like a bioactive compound, like essential oils, that supports your body's natural ability to heal itself. So it's very different fundamentally and theoretically. It's different also physiologically, like physically different than using something like rosemary to boost up blood pressure because you're hypotensive. It's something different than using cinnamon to decrease blood glucose levels. Like this is a different approach. It's like healing from the inside out. And so we find, again, this is in the research proven with human trials, sandalwood and ylang line, known harmonizers. It, they just give, and we don't understand exactly why, but they help your body reach peace homeostasis internally at a cellular level. And you, you even said that, like, I'm like, oh, you even said it in a peaceful way. <laughs> <laughs> really? And I'll say, I went through my own personal hell uh, like a year and a half, two years ago, just being a husband, a provider, sole provider of my home, trying to start my businesses, recently graduating from a second career trade school, getting my doctorate, um, having four kids. Like it was a really stressful time for me, working 100 plus hours a week, right? And I found myself instinctively going to Ylang Lang. And I never mm -hmm. used Ylang Lang really much before. I mean, again, mm -hmm. I say this a lot. If you still be listening to me before, forgive the, the repeat, but if you're new, my little joke is, you know, I'm not going to go play beach volleyball with my guy friend smelling like Ylang Lang. It'll take me to my <laughs> I mean, there is a point where guys are a little concerned about how they right. smell. I mean, you smell musk. You don't smell like flowers. So anyway, I overcame that. And I started using Ylang Lang with other oils like lime and myrrh and sweet myrrh, which is known as opaponics. Mm. And I started making my own blends with sandalwood. And I was instinctively drawn to these oils. And I had no idea why. And now I understand because not only are, are they helpful for anxiety and they're helpful for peace and calming, but they have that harmonizing effect. And, I, and over the course of a few months to now a year, mm. I actually don't, I'm not drawn to that right now. Mm. Um, dare I say, I don't need it. And they're still there. You know, Yalang Lang, of course, is always in our love blend. And that's something good too for people who want to boost libido and other things like that and just create a nice mood, which is very important for, for couples. But it's something that I don't go to on a daily basis like I used to. So anyway, that's also, we need to trust our intuition, trust your gut, be led of God, be led of the spirit. Because again, this is to me a very spiritual journey and not everything can be something that we could see, touch, or taste. Hey guys, I'm so excited that my new book, Waste Away, The Chantel Rayway, is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and pretty much anywhere you can find books. But we also have the audiobook, the ebook, and my new recipe book that you can download all the recipes that I love that I make, and it's super cheap. It's all my favorites. Anyway, if you have a minute to write a review on Amazon, I would be ever grateful. This brings us right to our next question. This is from Erica in Minnesota. It says, what is your opinion on ingesting versus ingesting slash swallowing essential oils? There's a lot of mixed reviews. Are there certain brands that are better to swallow than others? And are there certain oils that shouldn't be swallowed? Also, I was taught that I need to put a carrier oil in my capsule, but I don't understand the point because once you swallow it and the capsule dissolves, it's all going to the same place at the same time anyways, question mark. Really, really insightful. Um, what's her name? Erica in Minnesota. Erica, okay. Erica, that you're thinking, you're thinking deeper mm -hmm. than most people. Let's try, I'm try to remember, you asked me like five questions or so. Um, carrier oil, well, why? <laughs> was what yeah, I'm going backwards I'm thinking, ingesting and yeah. swallowing essential oils so the quickest out of all those the quickest one is the dilution piece why why do you add a carrier oil because of absorbability bottom line a carrier oil acts it helps your body absorb it it actually acts as a carrier which can help your bloodstream so that's why you always want to dilute oils topically too otherwise you're literally wasting your money plus it protects also can protect your gastric lining and these oils are caustic they can cause ulcers so diluting it helps prevent that. So safety and efficacy, really, okay? If you don't dilute, you can hurt yourself and you're just wasting your money because your body will not absorb as much. Internal use, my, I do not understand, literally. 
I do, but I don't. I don't understand why this is even still an issue. Um, I know why. And if we had more time, I can explain more of the history and the politics behind it. But here's the bottom line. Out of all of the essential oils manufactured in the world, again, take big picture approach. Mm -hmm. Essential oils are used in your cleaning products. And we're talking conventional, you know, we're also in your food and flavor items. Like what do you think flavors your Coca-Cola? Think of it. What do you think flavors your peppermint and patties? What do you think flavors your lemon bars? Any processed food with natural or unnatural flavoring is essential oil based. Okay. Essential oils are also included as you would expect in the aromatherapy industry, like literally buying oils. So they're in all, they're in five major industries, even the medical industry. Again, what's in your drugs? Where did they think they get these chemical compounds out of all the industries in the world that use essential oils? 50% of all the oils manufactured in the world are consumed by the food and flavor industry. Mm. So what does that mean? you're consuming essential oils all day long and you don't even realize it. The difference is dosage. And going back to your Coca-Cola, it's a special proprietary blend that no one knows unless you work at Coke, but it's like micro doses of essential oils with all their sugar water to give you what people know and love as Coke or Pepsi or 7-Up, right? All these different flavors. So when it comes to the medicinal aspect of essential oils, dose is important. And the first step, and again, we cover all of this in our master class and in our book because this does warrant further discussion because there's a huge list. I can't give you that list of the ones that, that I mean, there's a huge list of things. So of the oils that are safe and not safe. But in general, a vast majority of oils that you find on the market are gonna be safe for internal use. Uh, the few that aren't that you shouldn't, you know, bitter almond, wormwood, rue, um, wintergreen, and there's a list. Again, I list them on my website, I list them in my book. Um, there are several that you need to be cautious of, but the vast majority of them, the eucalyptus, the rosemary, the lemon, the lime, the peppermint, the basil, like all these oils. If, if the herb is safe to consume, it's most likely, most likely that it's safe to consume, but it's not always, that's not always, there's always exceptions to the rule. So one way that we like to ingest essential oils to get a therapeutic dose, a minor therapeutic dose is through culinary. So there's, I'm telling you, if you love guacamole. I love guacamole. I am like a, I, I have to be real careful. I, I don't, you know, it's funny. We had a doctor on our, on our show. I can't remember who it was, but she talked about how that something in avocados like has like a feel good thing where you just feel good. Cause I like, I can't ever get enough avocados and guacamole for me. Well, you've never had guacamole without a drop of cilantro in it. Oh yeah, like. my God. I'm, I love cilantro. I am a cilantro. This is what I tell. This is what I tell the people when I do the guacamole or wherever I am. I say, put so much guac, uh, so much cilantro in it that once you get to the point, you're like, oh my gosh, she can't possibly want more. Put another cup. <laughs> so, so Same put just put one. So you would say one drop of cilantro oil in your avocado for your guacamole. Yeah. So if you're making a dish of guacamole and that will serve two, three, four people, you could put about two drops per dish. Same mm -hmm. thing with your lime. I would actually do two drops of lime and two drops of guacamole Ooh, I love that. in your guac. Same thing with your, your spaghetti sauce. Put a couple drops of oregano. Like just typically speaking, mm. two drops of essential oil can replace a, um, up to a tablespoon of herb or zest in any recipe. So it's a lemon zest, an orange zest, a pepper, whatever, all these mm -hmm. things. Same thing with the mints and same thing, you know, we covered herbs, mints and spices, cinnamon. Um, you typically don't want more than two drops per dish as a whole, right? You have a couple drops of this, a couple drops of that, but you don't want you know, like a hundred drops of essential oil. I get too much, but that's a really nice way of having a low dose therapeutic, what we call a culinary dose. But for people that are trying to treat systemic issues and chronic disease, including cancer and autoimmunity and diabetes, that's where capsules come into play. And you want to have a gel capsule filled with a carrier oil, like we talked about earlier, and anywhere from three to four to five drops max, like max, in a capsule. I recommend usually starting with two or three drops and having that up to two times a day and monitor how your body responds to it. And so you want to be under the guidance of a healthcare professional. And here's the disclaimer that's really serious, y'all. You don't even know what's going on in your body biochemically. And I cover this in my new book about 
chemical soup. Like we literally are walking chemical soup. Your, to- your, your, your thoughts, the toxins from the air, the things that you're eating, the, what you're putting on your skin, the drugs that you're on, your supplements, all of this makes up a chemical soup that you have no idea if there's going to be an interaction. And yes, essential oils can and will interact with certain drugs. The best example and something that's very important is people that are on cumin or blood thinners. Stay away from ingesting clove. So mm-hmm. your favorite essential oil brand, they have mm-hmm. their immunity blends. Main ingredient is clove. You don't want to be ingesting that if you're on a blood thinner. I mean, that's a disaster for, or that's a recipe for disaster, right? So there are certain things you need to be cautious of in certain drug interactions. And that's where you want to go to your pharmacist. Like, look, I'm looking to treat this XYZ disease. And here's what I want to do. Do you have any advice? Your pharmacist should know. If not, then you pick up my book, you watch my masterclass, you start to dive deep. Like if you're really trying to treat a disease, treat it as such and don't be flipping about it. Got it. All right. Alex in Bedford says, I struggle with really bad anxiety, but I really don't want to get on medication because I've heard stories from my friends. What are the best essential oils that I can use for anxiety and how should I be taking them? Diffusing, swallowing, rubbing, etc. I tried diffusing one oil called Stress Away, which is a blend at nighttime, and it gave me crazy dreams, which is the opposite of the effect I was going for, LOL. Do you think this caused my weird dreams or was this just a coincidence? Oh no, definitely not a coincidence. You actually had an adverse response to that blend. And that's something we all need to recognize. Now I can't speak to the purity of that blend or the brand, Mm -hmm. but one thing to remember, and this is an overall rule of thumb with everything, whether it's a supplement, whether it's a drug, a pharmaceutical intervention or an essential oil, is that purity doesn't guarantee safety. And purity doesn't guarantee efficacy. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't matter if it's pure. What matters mostly, it does matter, but purity What matters most when it comes to your interaction is how your body responds to something at a biochemical level. And nothing can guarantee your results that you're looking for. The same way a drug, the same way a supplement, the same way a food. Well, this is the best organic, non-GMO, locally grown, whatever I've ever, you know, you could still have an adverse reaction to it because there's something in your body. And one thing we need to realize too is moment by moment, day by day, year by year, our biochemistry is different. And it just makes sense. Think about it. Your air is different. The chemicals on your skin because of the products you use are different. The foods are different. Biochemically, we'll never be the same. We're constantly adapting to our environment. We're constantly in flux. So that makes all the sense in the world. Doesn't mean that oil's junk. It just triggers something in your body. So when it comes to anxiety, there are several essential oils. And out of all the things that we've seen in the research, sleep issues, depression, and anxiety rank as the most evidence-based out of all the human trials that we have on essential oils specifically. And you'll see oils like valerian, lavender, you'll see vetiver, Roman chamomile come up as very nice calming sedative oils. Ylang-ylang I mentioned earlier, um, specifically. One that comes out a lot that a lot of folks don't even Every time about. you say that, I'm going to think about you going out to play volleyball with the- with I know. And then taking my guy card away, right? <laughs> um, one thing people don't know about typically is, yeah, they all have all, a lot of people have heard the ylang langs and the lavenders and the chamomiles and vetivers. Like those are the calming oils. But what a lot of folks don't realize is citrus oils, specifically bergamot, has been shown repeatedly in the research and it can help stop a panic attack in its, in its tracks. And I, I, wow. I equate panic to anxiety because I dealt with that and they're, they often feed into each other. And sometimes people don't even know the difference. And it's just, you know, what is it? I'm panicking, I'm having anxiety. It's like that. So right. bergamot is one that I would pick up. And so if you want a whole list, and again, I did a literature review on this. If you go to my website, drericz.com, search up anxiety, you'll see several articles. We even have an anxiety spray for dogs and pets because, hey, you know, sometimes pets can get agitated, especially if you have a new pet into a new home. There are things to do. But spritzers, you know, having something like a spray bottle like this and making your own blend. Oh, I love that. Just like, oh, you're stressing me out. (laughs) That would be awesome. 
Oh my gosh, as soon as someone stresses you out, you just kind of pull it out, spritz, spritz. Literally. I mean, and you know, having this out, having an aromatherapy inhaler, like this to me, anyone that battles anxiety needs to have this. Mm -hmm. This thing looks like a lipstick tube. Um, mm -hmm. You can get fancy ones like this or one that's a medical grade plastic. Mm -hmm. side is a cotton swab. And you soak that with essential oils. And again, all mm -hmm. the recipes are in my book. And when you're having an attack, you literally just smell. It could be on a subway, it could be at work, but this is very concealed, fits in your pocket, your purse, your desk office, drawer, and you don't need to bother people with spraying because when you spray, it's, it's everywhere now. But this is another, another way. Um, applying it topically um, in the back of your neck is a good approach on your abdomen also because it's a very permeable part of your body. It really penetrates into your bloodstream within minutes. Um, this sort of thing. Again, we always want to dilute essential oils. We always want to have blends that work for us. And it takes trial and error. So for example, like this is very practical, whether it's my website, my book, or someone else's, you'll typically get a list of essential oils that have been known to work for a condition. You want to start practicing. You want to start doing some trial and error. You want to start seeing what's going to work for you. When I say practicing, what I mean is a doctor practices medicine, which means she will prescribe a drug for you and then she'll monitor your progress. Mm. If it's not working the way that you want it to work, she'll change the protocol. You need to do the same thing. Yeah. Well, let me, so this, that gives us to our next question. It says, this is Jamie in, in Suffolk. She says, I once went to an essential oil party where they were selling oils. The lady who led the party said that there, that if there's an oil whose smell really offends us, our body is telling us that we actually need and crave that oil. Do you agree with this and is there any truth to it? If so, will you explain? I've noticed one smell in particular that I can't stand is clary sage and I've struggled with hormonal imbalance my whole life. This kind of made me think that her theory is true. Jamie in Suffolk. Yeah, Jamie, so that's absolute nonsense. Um, <laughs> okay. Now, your body still might be craving something and you might not enjoy it. Here's, I don't really like broccoli. I'll, I'll just be real. You know, I don't really like the taste of like freshly squeezed or freshly juiced kale. I mean, who does? Maybe, maybe you I do, do actually. Just straight up I kale juice? Not Good straight up, but I do like, like with, <laughs> if I do like kale, spinach, and celery, I love it. Yeah. So like, uh, just, just again, you know, think yeah. about, you know, here's my thought. Do you live to eat or do you eat to live? Do you use oils to live or do you use, or do you live to use oils? Mm -hmm. So with that mentality, Clary Sage proven over and over to be one of the most effective women's health hormone balancing oils on the planet right? So you might not like the smell of it, but how does your body respond to it clinically? And there are certain oils, like I really didn't like ylang lang. I mean, it's just, ah, it's all right. It's really strong, but I used it and it helped me. I was, you know, I felt different. I, I, I was drawn to it because of how I felt. Okay. So I would say if you don't like the smell of something, what you want to do is you'll want to try clary sage, lavender, and geranium, for example. Maybe put in some ylang ylang. That's a nice blend. See how your body responds to it. But there's absolutely no scientific reason or even, I, and, and don't take it offensively if you teach this, it's absolutely non-commonsensical to say that your body craves something that is repulsive to you. Like that to me also, evolutionarily speaking, that's, that doesn't make sense. You mm. crave what you want. Like we Yes. I, I agree with that. I say that all the time. It's like, think about it. Like for me, if I'm starting to get a cold, I'm going to crave oranges or orange juice. Yeah. Your body will tell you this is what you want. Yeah. Oftentimes. I mean, just again, think how, why we crave sugar so much because there's an evolutionary advantage to having carb loading when you're going to have feasting for two, three, four, five days, right? Think we didn't have all the food available to us. Think why we crave sex. It feels good. I mean, there's a reason why people have cravings the way that they do. And look at your primal cravings. Mm -hmm. Insight tell that. Yeah. All right. Corey and Little Rock, I want to start diffusing some oils in my office 
that will help make everyone alert and productive, especially in that afternoon slump. What are some of the best oils that I can diffuse that won't be too strong and smelly, but will really give everyone that extra oomph that we all need? Any ideas? Corey in Little Rock. So Corey, the the concern is that what might not be too smelly for you or strong might will be to someone else. And like we just heard from the previous question, someone was repulsed by Clary Sage. So there is no one scent or blend that everyone will like. But with that said, again, going back to trial and error, what I like to use and what I found is very effective to get a little extra boost are the mints, the spearmint, the peppermint, and the winter greens. What I like to do is to mix Litsia, also known as Mei Chang, with rosemary, spear, actually it's what's in this blend right here, um, rosemary, eucalyptus, Litsia, peppermint. This is just a nice like perk up and go, helps you focus, energizes you. Peppermint's been actually shown clinically to incre increase and boost athletic performance. So it makes a lot of sense. It helps you breathe better. And when you breathe better, you get more oxygen. More oxygen means more energy. So that's a great blend as well. So that's, you can just start, just start with that or rosemary, the herb of remembrance, you know, a little bit of rosemary. And I like to add sometimes an orange to that or a citrus, they really blend well together. All right, last question, Helen in Virginia Beach. My son is almost five months and I've had recurring mastitis almost twice a month in both breasts since he was born. I really don't wanna stop breastfeeding because of the cost associated with formula and of course the health benefits. I also don't want to constantly take antibiotics either. What are some oils that I can use to help this? Um, first, do me a favor, because we don't have time to cover everything. Go to my website, type up breastfeeding. Um, Mama Z wrote a great report on that and all the things that she does. One thing that comes that we used was actually Roman chamomile tea. And we steeped tea in hot water and we did compresses. So that is very effective. I mean, chamomile will just take out all, I mean, just help to help take out any sort of infection out of the nipple. One concern in general, and there are again, chamomile and lavender are two that really work. You want something very safe, something very soothing. Um, one concern about using oils specifically on the nipple is that the baby will actually suck on the nipple shortly afterwards if you're nursing regularly and you don't want to burn the baby or have the baby interact with that. So the rule of thumb is right after nursing, that's when you apply the essential oils, dilute it heavily. You need one or two drops per teaspoon of carrier oil. So a good recommendation is coconut oil, unrefined organic coconut oil, because it's antifungal, a teaspoon of that, one drop of lavender, one drop of Roman chamomile, and that could be your salve that you can apply after immediately after nursing, but you want to give your body at least an hour to an, an hour and a half between nursing and application. Because again, you don't want baby just to, some people don't think about that. And they apply the oils 15 minutes later, baby's nursing. You don't want that. So I want to stress the importance of that. Um, but yeah, chamomile and lavender are good ones that you want to start with. If you need some more support, and then you can actually apply um, more of the anti-infection oils around the breast itself and not on the nipple. And that could be, again, diluted heavily. You could go with oregano, thyme, and lemongrass. But of course, you always want to be careful. These are really, really potent oils and make sure there's at least an hour and a half to two hours between application and nursing. Because you don't want baby to be just inhaling those strong oils. Awesome. Well, it has been such a pleasure talking with you. And listeners, go to drericz.com. Their website is amazing. You've got so much content on there. It's absolutely one of the best sites I've seen. I love it. Love it. Love it. So thank you so much for being on our show. And we will put a bunch of notes in the show notes with some upcoming launches and classes he's got as well. And if you haven't gotten his book, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Get it today. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a great one. Bye-bye.